Hey, hey, Eric, how you doing? Good, what's up, Bob? Hey, I'm in the Jefferson City Fairfield Inn. What a wonderful place. I'm all the way back from Mizzou. Um, hey, uh, you know, everybody knows Anthony's a great player, but he'd only, he'd only averaged six points in those first three games. You know, he really hadn't looked to shoot a lot, kind of struggled a little bit with his shooting, you know, from a percentage standpoint. What do you think got him going scoring-wise over there like he did? Yeah, I think, you know, I think with all – um, you know, freshmen or transfers that there's always, you know, a little bit of learning curve for how we want to play for how the defense is playing your particular team. Um, but Anthony's done a great number one. He's been, you know, he's really gotten in the gym a lot on his own. Um, a lot, uh, you know, shooting, he's digested a lot of film. Um, and I think most importantly, probably Bob is, is Anthony just was really, really aggressive taking the ball to the basket and he's shooting the three ball of late much better. And then that opens up dribble drives, post-ups and, and things of that nature. And then I uh, got to ask you, you watching the games, we see Nick on the bench, he's very animated. So I, I, he's, I assume he's feeling better, but what have you thought about his attitude? He's really been, you know, a good cheerleader, I guess, a good teammate and, do you have any update on his status and if he might have a shot to play Monday night against Troy? Yeah, he, so Nick has done a great job of late, you know, his, his repetitions in practice uh, have continued to get better and improve. Um, his activity level in practice continues to grow. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that Monday, the, you know, he'll be evaluated again. Um, he has not been fully cleared, um, but he did meet with, with, uh, you know, with rehab today. Um, and I think he's meeting with the doctor again on Monday. And uh, like, what all has he been able to do in practice? Has he done any team stuff or is it all individual stuff or what, what, what's he been able to do? No, he, yeah, he's, he's starting to do some team stuff again. Um, you know, obviously, you know, today we'll be able to, to get a little bit more active. Um, and then certainly, you know, tomorrow, you know, we'll be more active than, than even today. So um, he's, he's, he's moving, you know, in the right direction for sure. He's taken his rehab extremely serious. Uh, he and Matt, the trainer have spent a ton of time together. Um, you know, so he's, I mean, he's, he's getting closer to playing for sure. Um, and like I said, on Monday, we'll just, we'll just have to see exactly, you know, how he does in the next two days of practice. And yeah, just what do you thought about his attitude? Like I say, being over there on the bench and really being into it and, and also how anxious, obviously you want to be smart with it and not play him till he's ready, but how anxious do you think he is to play? Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt that Nick is really, really, uh, anxious and eager, his attitude on the bench, his attitude in film, his attitude at halftime, his attitude uh, has been really, really good, really since he stepped on campus. I mean, we knew what a team, great teammate he was in high school, um, how well liked he was by his teammates. Um, everybody here uh, understands that, you know, when he's not playing, how badly he wants the team to win. I got a couple more questions, but I'll turn it back to Mike. Thanks, Eric. Curtis. Hey, Coach. You know, we've, we've talked so much about the youth and the newness of this team. And then, you know, you're a couple of weeks into the season. You find yourself at the Maui Invitational and, you know, just some dog fights against a couple of really good teams. How do you feel like this group responded and, and handled those moments? And do you feel like they, they maybe grew up a little bit? I think so. I mean, the Maui tournament, you know, historically is, 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 you know, a premier uh, tournament, unbelievable teams in that tournament. Um, yeah, I was, I was really, you know, sometimes even when you lose um, there's great learning lessons um, and, and, you know, I mean, Crate and San Diego state, both teams really well coached. Um, I thought both teams you know, really understood their roles really well uh, this early in the season. So certainly, you know, huge challenge um, for us. And, and I thought our young team grew up, um, you know, over those three games. And I think, 
you know, as, as we get into conference play, those, those games we'll be able to reflect back on and use them as learning lessons. And you, you kind of touched on it, but that is such a unique environment. It's high intensity over there. And then obviously you had the travel as well. How do you kind of come down from the high of something like that and get recalibrated for this game coming up on Monday against a, a Troy team that's off to a pretty good start? Yeah, I think that's having talked to other people that have played in Maui. I think that's one of the concerns is coming, you know, coming back and, and playing your first game. And I, to my knowledge, I think we have the earliest game being on a Monday, um, you know, I know some other teams play on Tuesday and another team plays on Thursday as their first game back. So again, I, I think we have for sure as short of turnaround as anybody. So that is of, of concern. I know that sleep patterns are a little bit, you know, messed up right now for all of us. Um, but hopefully, you know, by tomorrow night, we'll, we'll be a little bit more adjusted um, time frame wise. And, and, um, you know, Troy is a, is a really well coached team there. They have really good toughness. They play extremely hard. They're a high steel team. Um, you mentioned the great start that they're off to. Um, they, they pound the offensive glass. They jump passing lanes. They, uh, again, shoot a high volume of three. So they, they're good in transition. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that we have to cover in a very short time frame. Scotty? Yeah, Eric, I'm just curious what your kind of overarching takeaways, observations were from the trip and just what, what do you think you learned about the team that you got? Well, you know, we had a lot of guys step up at different times of games. And, and um, you know, I think we, you know, to play in such close games, I think that really helps you uh, down the road. Um, I think, you know, we got to see contrasting styles of play. Um, so I think there was a tremendous amount of, of, of benefit from our end. What did you think about Trevin um, over the trip? Because first game is pretty frustrating, got in foul trouble. The second halves of those last two games, he seemed like he really came alive. What, what made, I guess, what made the, the switch flip for him? You know, I, I think he's just a guy that, you know, kind of like a baseball hitter, you give him enough swings and, and he's, and he's going to figure out a way if he's really good to, 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 to get on the base path or, to, uh, to, you know, to, 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 to hit RBIs or whatever you might want to say. And with TB, his three point shooting really changes the complexion of who we are. Um, and then he had some really good, really phenomenal dribble drives to the rim as well. And, and then obviously defensively is his length. And um, again, we've stated before that he's a starter, um, but we're bringing him off the bench. And and I love him in that role because because he, he can change the complexion of the game, whether it be in the 17 minute mark of the first half or or the 19 minute mark of the second half. At some point, he seemed to, to come in and, and give us a, a great jolt when he when he enters the game. Christina? Coach, can you hear me okay? Yes. Can you okay, hear cool. Christina? I'm in public and on headphones, so I just want to be sure. Um, so we didn't see Kamani in the first couple of games and then obviously came in in a big role in that third game. Just what made you decide to turn to him when you did? Well, when we met as a staff, you know, three games in three days, um, you know, you always want somebody, um, you know, to have – to be able to come and have an impact – um, in the game, maybe that has fresh legs. And uh, I, the thing that maybe people have not talked about with Kamani in that third game against SDSU was he played phenomenal um, help defense. Um, he was kind of always in the right spot defensively. And then obviously his, his put back and his two free throws um, show the mental toughness that he has to be able to sit for so long and then come in and contribute. But he was, you know, we we talked about Nick, Bob and I had talked about Nick's, um, you know, energy on the bench. And Kamani's been great on the bench as well um, He he throughout the, the course of the season. So really, really happy for Kamani um, that he was able to come in. And we, we, we don't we don't win that game unless somebody maybe that hasn't played 
much in games one and two were able to come in and have an impact. Bob, you got a follow up? Yeah, Eric, I was, I was reading up on Troy. I mean, they're six and one. They I think they have seven guys averaging between like 14 and nine points. So pretty good balance. And, you know, Duke Miles, like, looks like they're, they're leading score and they're, they're averaging nine made threes and shooting 30, about 37%. And they're set plus, almost plus eight on turnover margin. Just what, what do you think of maybe if, if go their personnel a little bit and just their strengths that concern you? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the backcourt of, of number three, Miles, and and obviously um, number two, Mohammed, you know, is, is an excellent player. Both those guys play the guard and zero punter, um, you know, is a, is a really good three-point shooter. Three, Eugene can make threes. Um, you know, Phillips at the at the small forward spots, another guy that can make threes. And, um, you know, Turner, Fields, those guys that, that are kind of swing guys at the 3-4 spot can, can make open shots. And then, you know, their centers do a really good job of pounding the offensive glass and, and rim running. So they present a lot of problems. You know, they played excellent uh, in Tallahassee against Florida State and Montana is not an easy place to win at. And, and uh, you know, they, they beat Montana at their place. So, um, like I said, really gritty, tough team, um, team that plays really, really hard and, and creates turnovers. And then anytime you face a team that can make threes and uh, has, has good game off the bounce and can dribble drive as well, uh, you've got to make some decisions from a defensive scheme standpoint. And then Ricky, you know, he starts off over seven the other night. We knew he played 40 minutes. You're thinking, man, he, he doesn't have any legs. And then he, I guess, got a second win or something, got something. And then he really played strong. What what'd you think of what he did? And he played 81 minutes back to back to back nights, you know. Ricky was great. I mean, there was a point where I was thinking of taking him out. And, you know, I think he felt like he had a, a second wind in him. And, um, you know, his, his performance – you know, he's, we put him in some pick and rolls that we just didn't really envision uh, doing that, Bob. We thought he was going to be more of a of a wing scorer, transition scorer, isolation player. But he has done a really, really good job in pick and roll, both as a scorer and as a ball handler. Thought he thought he did a really good job. I think one of the games he had four assists. Um, you know, so he's also been able to find open teammates as well. And I've had so many people ask me, who got the technical against Creighton? And I said, well, I wasn't there. I don't know. I, do, do you, can you reveal who got the technical? Did they ever tell you or do you, do you know? I mean, it was someone on our bench. Um, they didn't, you know, I don't know if it was identified in the heat of the moment of of who it was. Um, you know, it wasn't, wasn't me, but I don't know if it was an assistant coach or a player. They kind of pointed in a direction and and we just tried to refocus on the game at that point um you know yeah. okay I'll, <laughs> I'll take that as a nod to dial and then that, that that post game i mean i know there's probably no love lost between you guys and the, and because you were at nevada and played them and you were at university of san diego and or san diego state and they really want to knock off the big boys and the sec and all that but that post game i mean have you i mean just what was your uh, I guess in retrospect, looking back, how crazy was that? And you've ever been involved in something like that? And when was it kind of scary? Because that one dude, he had a towel or something on his neck. I mean, man, he he looked crazy. You know what I'm talking? No, about? I mean, I, I I I think that you know we just want to talk about Troy today, and Hunter and I have been in discussions. Um, you know, and so, you know, I, again, I just think we want to focus on Troy, San Diego State's, and an incredibly well coached team, and. They're going to have a great year. I mean, I think that's a team that's a a team that can go really, really far in the in the NCAA tournament. And and uh, you know, they're they're a, a team that defends and is physical. And we're a team that tries to defend. And and um, you know, again, right now we're just trying to figure out in a short turnaround how we can prep for for Troy. And one last thing on Nick. I guess would it be accurate to say he's maybe been upgraded from doubtful to questionable, or would you call him probable, or what would be your? Uh, I mean, I I was before I met with you guys. I I was in a staff meeting, Bob. So I have not gotten a chance to talk to Matt, um, and I don't know if I don't know if basketball wise we've 
use those phrases since I've come here. But I, I, I do think that, you know, we have practice today. We have practice tomorrow. Um, you know, when you play three games in three nights, you know, you're not going to have any physical uh, contact in practice. So this will be, you know, 48 hours for him to be able to continue to test and see what his comfort level is and the doctor's comfort level and, and the trainer. You personally, you have, it's like having this Ferrari in your garage and you want to take it out and drive it around. Um, I mean, how anxious are you to see him play and, and, and get his contributions, obviously? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I just feel for, for Nick because he's, he works so hard in the summer and, and he's, you know, he's had to, to watch games that are big games. And, um, you know, I know he's really anxious to, to play. And I think with any of your student athletes, you always want, um, you know, those student athletes to, um, you know, to be able to do what they work for, which is get out and play in front of fans and, and play in front of a national audience. So um, hopefully, you know, that, 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 time frame for him coming back will you know will happen really soon for him and for our team yeah you, you sound kind of hoarse are you feeling okay i feel good i just do not have a voice okay just yelling too much not a cold or something no cold okay oh, that's cool we'll let him save his voice a little more and let him go okay. go down to practice <laughs> hey, 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 thanks, thanks you guys so Hey, ab we've talked so much about your ability to impact the game in other ways besides scoring uh, and you obviously did a lot of scoring in Maui. I'm just curious, did, did you go into the tournament with, you know, maybe a mindset of being more aggressive, uh, looking for your shot, or is it just something that kind of came within the flow of the games? Um, I really, I knew the teams were going to be playing there, going to be high level, and the pace in the game was going to be high level games. So I kind of came in a little more aggressive than I have been the rest of the season. But uh, at the end of the day, it was just taking what the defense gives us and, uh, my teammates trusted me, giving me the ball and telling me to be confident and play. So, uh, I mean, I came in a little more aggressive, but, I mean, it was just the same thing, really. And, you know, how does a, a performance like that on that kind of stage help, you know, your confidence individually? And and then how do you feel like a team is looking and, and feeling after that? Um, I mean, individually, it just – it just shows that uh, I can do what the team needs me to do. Uh, some nights it's going to be score. Some nights I'm going to need to facilitate. Sometimes it might be a little bit of both. And, uh, I mean, I think the team's always kind of been pretty confident. But uh, just two big wins like that and then the third game, it's just it kind of helps show us what type of team we are and uh, how good we can be if we, if we lock in and do all the little things a little bit better. Bob? Hey, Anthony, I mean, 26 and back-to-back -back games did, in high-level competition, did, did you surprise yourself at all? I mean, we obviously know you're a really good player, but, but you know, 52. And, you, yeah, I guess you led all the great players earlier. I think you had the highest scoring average. Um, yeah. Did you expect to score that well? Um, I mean, I just come into the game trying to do what the team needs to do. So throughout the flow of the game, I kind of figure out what they need me to do. So uh, I was just getting good looks. Teammates are setting me up. And uh, I mean, I didn't really surprise myself. I kind of know like whenever the team needs me to score, I'm going to score and uh, be aggressive in those big games. So it wasn't really a surprise. It was more just uh, my teammates trusting in me and uh, just helping me get easy looks. Well, one, one basket you didn't hit was that one at the end of regulation. And Kamani said on the radio that he told you guys, hey, Take the shot with a little bit of time left. Give me a chance to get in there. What did you think of that play he made? And and uh, was that in the back of your mind? If I miss this, Kamani might stick it back. I mean, it was game saving play, uh, big play. You know, he hadn't really played a lot the whole tournament, but he kept a good mindset yeah. and came in and made a huge play. So uh, I mean, going to the rim, Kamani in the game, it's kind of a little bit of a safety valve because you know, if there's time, he could possibly get the rebound. So. Shot went up. It kind of felt a little off, so I kept going. But Kamani, Kamani got that board, and it was big for us. And then, and then we saw Nick on the bench. He was pretty active. I guess his knee must be feeling a little bit better. But how would you say Nick's doing? I mean, I'm sure he's anxious to play, but how would you say he's doing? And how would you say you guys have done with without him? You know, you've done pretty well, it looks like. I mean, uh, that's really up to Nick, to be honest. But he's high. He's high in spirit. He's been a good teammate for us. 
And uh, we just try to continue to play hard with Adam, even though we miss him. And we know how much better he makes us. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's all up to him. Uh, I don't I can't really tell you. I don't really know how he's feeling, but I just know he's super high in spirit. And he's being a real good teammate. And then um, you guys, you know, three games in three days, high level games, long trip home. Um, are you guys going to be ready for Monday? I know you're young and everything, but how do you feel about, I guess, coming off the high of that experience and then getting back into the regular season? Um, I mean, we're a little banged up across the board, pretty, pretty tired from those three games, but, uh, you know, we're going to do the best we can to prepare for Troy on Monday and uh, just get the right combination of practice and rest. And I think after that, we'll be ready to play on Monday. Okay, thank you. I might have a couple more, but I'll turn back to Mike. Thank you. Scotty. I don't know if there's a whole lot left to ask, but um, I'll go with like, what what, were, what are some like your overarching takeaways just from the, the team uh, as a whole over those three games? Like, what did, what did you learn about the guys? Um, I mean, I think we showed Great toughness and fight. Uh, I think at one point in the crane game, we were down 12. And then that San Diego State game, we were down. So we just battled all weekend, really. Uh, it's tough to play three games back to back to back. And uh, we had guys playing a lot of minutes consistently. So we just, I just saw a lot of fight from the team. And we really came together. We were all pulling for each other. And uh, we all just wanted to win. So, I mean, we, we were pretty tough this weekend. And, uh, we battled all weekend. I think you mentioned a couple of weeks ago that you've maybe never been defended like you are now. I'm curious what, like how you've adjusted to that or what adjustments you've made to, uh, I guess, have the scoring games that you've had recently. Well, Coach Mus just told me really just shoot the ball, stop thinking about it, and uh, just play with a little more confidence. And then once I started doing that, they couldn't really guard me that way. So it kind of opened up the game for me. Uh, and like those games where they're guarding me like that, it was hard for me to just do whatever. So once I shot the ball, I started opening it up and making the game easier for me. Last thing, I think Trevin got in some foul trouble in that first game, probably pretty frustrating. But the two second halves in the last two games, he was like a different, different level. What what did you see from from Trevin? What did he give you guys when he was on the floor? Uh, just what we know he can do. Um, shot the ball well. Block shots at a pretty high level. We rebounded and defended uh, despite being in foul trouble. I mean, he just, he's a special talent. Um, he just showed that this weekend. Uh, you know, I think if he would have stayed out of foul trouble, his numbers would have been a little bit higher than they even were. But uh, we really just, we really just saw the Trevor we know. And uh, he really just rose to the occasion in the big games. Any other questions for Anthony? Yeah, I had one more if it's okay. Um, you know, we saw Ricky, I guess, Wednesday night. He was 0 for 7, missed the dunk. You're thinking, man, he played 40 minutes last night. He doesn't have his legs. He's spent. And then he ends up hitting 6 out of 12 and scoring whatever, 19 or whatever it was. What would you think of how he kind of battled through some adversity, wasn't having a good game, and then he just kind of, you know, got back to playing the way he had been? Um, I mean, Ricky's one of our best shot makers, so – uh, we kind of just told him keep shooting, keep being aggressive, and uh, we needed him to keep being aggressive that game, to be honest. And uh, they just started falling, so that's what we knew was going to happen as long as he was still aggressive. And uh, I mean, he was really big for us down the stretch. Like we really went to him a lot, and uh, he answered. So he really just did that all weekend. So it was just a big tournament for me. And did you guys sleep all the way on that ten-hour flight or whatever it was? And you get sleep when you got um, home, or what, what was that uh, like? Back and jet lag. I mean, the sleeping arrangement was a little off on the plane, but I I probably woke up like five or six times. But other than that, we we're all trying to sleep. We we're tired. Yeah. Are, are you feeling okay now physically? Yeah. Oh yeah, physically. Yeah. Still just a little bit tired though. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Yeah. All right, John. Yeah, Ricky, um, I guess just what were your some of your just general overarching takeaways from just the guys and what would what, you learn about the team uh, over in the trip to Maui? 
Um, first of all, I just learned we have a, a lot of fight in us. I mean, I knew it was capable, but we really showed it. Obviously, we came up short against Creighton, but I feel like we showed a lot of toughness and fight and grit in that game. And then South Dakota, I mean, San Diego State, we um, did the same thing. We pulled off the win. So I'm proud of guys and how we play and the toughness we brought. And I'm pretty sure the coach is, too. Maybe what caught your your eye, your attention most when it came to AB's play over there? Um, really, the thing that caught my eye was the shooting ability. Um, I honestly just saw that he shot 40% throughout the tournament, which was really good. I've been telling him since day one just to shoot the ball and have confidence in it. And I feel like his confidence was kind of low when he was playing here early in the season. But he came out first two games, first all, actually all games, and shot the ball really well. And I was really proud of him. Um, other stuff was normal, the assists, the rebound, all that is, I see that every day. And then takeaways from TB's play, I think the first game was he's pretty frustrated, limited with foul trouble. With the second half of those last two games, he kind of kind of came alive. What what did he provide you guys, you think? I mean, it's going to be a really tough cover. Um, he really shot the ball really well, just like AB. And um, obviously the live dunks and, and the defense is something we see all the time. So just continuing to um, to utilize all his potential and talent, and that would be really good for us throughout the season. Curtis? Hey, Ricky, I wanted to ask you about Kamani. You know, he doesn't play in the first two games, and he comes in against San Diego State and gives you guys a, a big lift there, obviously. Uh, I guess, one, what did you make of, of the lift that he did provide for you? And then, two, you know, what do you think others can learn from his approach? Um, I honestly told him just to stay ready. I mean, obviously, if you're not playing as much, you're going to be a little frustrated. And I just kept telling him, stay ready, stay ready, stay locked in. And same thing I was telling Barry. That was my, that was my roommate. I was like, stay ready, stay locked in. He brought huge minutes that, that game as well. And Kamani, I'm really not surprised. Like, y'all saw that when we was in Spain. He was doing that, just dominating, being a dog out there. So I'm really not surprised. I'm really happy he hit the game winner. It was, it was crazy. Um, but I'm not surprised at all. That's what he does. And then your game against San Diego State, obviously you played a ton of minutes up until that point, and it uh, seems like you just couldn't get one to fall there for the longest, man, but you stayed with it, and it looks like you really flipped a switch and kind of ignited things down the stretch. What was your mindset, you know, when the, when the shots weren't falling, and then what was it that kind of led to you turning on there at the end? Um, It was simple. Um, My shots weren't falling in the beginning. It was really frustrating. I honestly wanted to come out. Coach Ashley, it was, it was actually really, really special. Coach brought a sub in, and I was already walking to the table because I thought I was coming out, and I didn't. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to do something productive out here. So I started focusing on defense and energy, and I was really tired in the first couple minutes. And then when I started focusing on defense, all that just disappeared, and I carried that on to the second half. And then the offense started clicking. Like, Coach called a play for me. I don't think he heard me, but I told AB, I was like, I don't even want no plays called for me. Like, I just want to go out here and play defense and, again, take care of itself. And it really did. And I was just really happy how the game played, though. Bob? Hey, hey Ricky. We, we all know Anthony's obviously a great player, but he'd only averaged six points the first three games. He really wasn't – and he had that one for seven start, I think. And um, what do you think, I guess, got him? I mean, 26, 26, and 15 or whatever it was. I think it was the leading scorer in the – in the whole tournament, which obviously has a ton of great players. What would you think of how he, you know, really elevated his offensive game scoring wise? I mean, I think the threes really helped it out. I mean, going into the tournament and really the whole year, people have been playing him not to shoot the three. So I think that opened everything up for him. I mean, he's a really good attacker to the basket. So being able to have to guard the three ball and a, and a drive was really difficult for teams. And he took full advantage of it. Not that you guys were lacking confidence before you went over there, but winning two great games and then that high level game against Creighton and they all almost beat Arizona in the final. Um, just uh, is there added confidence now, or, or what would that tournament do for you guys? You think? I definitely think it's added confidence. We played played three good teams. Um, Creighton was a really good offensive team, San Diego State was a really <clears throat> tough older team. So we played a little bit of everything. Uh, Louisville is athletic. So I think we got a good boost of, of, of great teams around the country. And I think that helped us for the season. Definitely a confidence booster. And then we, we saw. Individually. Uh, 
Uh, I'm sorry, what was the last part? I say individually and team wise. Okay, I'm sorry, I mean, step on your line there. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we saw Nick on the bench, very animated. He's obviously into the game, even though I can't get into the game, I guess. Um, what'd you think of his attitude and maybe how crazy is he feeling? And I guess how, how do you think you guys have played without him and how good will it be, you know, whenever he is able to play again? Um, I thought his energy was was amazing. Just like watching clips back and seeing him on the bench and how excited he is for us is, is really great because a lot of people wouldn't be doing that. Some people just be sitting there just waiting to get back on the court, but he's truly acting like a great teammate, and I love to see that. As um, far as him coming back, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. I know he's steadily getting healthy, so whenever he's ready, he's going to be on the court. I know that for sure. And then, you you know, th three games in three days, you know, long travel there, long travel back. How are, you, how are you, and you're an older guy, I know, and you're obviously in good shape, but how are you feeling physically? How do you think the team will be for Monday night coming off, you know, everything you did in there in Maui and all the travel and everything? I think we'll be fine. Um, I think everybody should be adjusted back to their sleep schedule, at least by tomorrow. I mean, I'm feeling well, well rested, and I, I'm pretty sure I play one of the most minutes on the team, so... I'm pretty sure everybody should be all right. And and Troy six and one. They won at Florida State. They they lost to St. Thomas out in Montana. I guess everybody's beating everybody these days. But um, what, what do you think? About, I don't know if you've studied them much yet. But what do you think about Troy? Like I say six and one. They already won at an ACC school. Kind of what are your thoughts on playing them and making sure you don't have a letdown? I mean, I know they're going to be hungry. I know they're going to come here to win. I know they're a pretty good defensive team. So we're just going to have to be ready. Can't take anybody for granted, as we're seeing around the country. Uh, smaller schools are beating bigger schools, however you want to name it. So we just can't take them lightly, and we just got to play our game. And they're averaging about nine made three-pointers and only about 11 turnovers. Obviously, you guys have defended three pretty well. You forced a lot of turnovers. Kind of, what do you think about their their game here in those numbers? Um, honestly, we just got to listen to coach's game plan. I mean, usually it's cutting down the three-pointers. Um, but whatever he has for us Monday night before the game, that's what we're going to listen to it and try to execute. Okay, thanks, man. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate it.